Television has a new voice of reason with the financial wisdom of Susie Orman and the wit of Medea. How much was that purse? The purse, 600. So mm -hmm. How much money do you have in there right now? I have three credit cards. And okay, maybe... how much money do you have in the purse right now? It's an easy, simple question, Mrs. Jones. Is it zero? Yes. Okay, let me help you understand the universal purse test. If the purse costs more than the amount of money you can keep in it on a regular basis, leave it on the rack. I loaned her about $10,000 a month, so nine months. And she has not paid me back the total sum of $86,000. You agreed to the dollar amount, $86,000? Yes. Why did you need $10,000 a month? What are your bills? What are your expenses? What do you need to cover for that amount of money? Debtor's Court with Lynn Richardson. Ms. Camino, please tell me your story. Um... Nine months ago, in December, I started loaning my friend um, money because she was injured and she was waiting on settlement money, but um, she could not support herself. So being the caring friend that I was, um, I loaned her about $10,000 a month until July, so nine months. I supported her, and um, she... Also, you had to use my credit cards for things that were not cash. For example, Ubers, Lyfts, um, food orders, things like that. And I have evidence of all of those transactions on bank statements, um, screenshots, text messages. Um, the problem that I'm having now is I know that her court date and her entire lawsuit ended June 6th. And I was told that she would be getting her money 30 days later, that's what she had told me. Um, but it's been months since that happened, and she has not paid me back the total sum of $86,000, which I let her borrow. And she's been avoiding me lately. Um, she doesn't look like she's going to be paying me back. And that's the problem that I have right now. Okay. Um, Ms. Adams, tell me your side. So she, I had gotten injured I got, got into a car accident. I needed a little bit of money because with what I do, I can't get workman's comp or anything. I'm an independent contractor, so it's all completely cash. So she said as a good friend, she would always help me out, be there for me. So I was completely willing to pay her back because I am getting a large settlement. I had to keep asking for more money. My family got sick. She said she was willing to help me out. And I have given her small payments, just not the full. But now that my case is settled, Things keep getting pushed back. They said that one of the signatures wasn't there on the papers that they needed. So things keep coming up, but I am paying her back. And tell me how much of a settlement are you expecting? 1.3 million. 1.3 million. And when did you get a judgment for that settlement? Um, late June. Late June. And is that approximately the time frame that you agree upon, that the settlement was supposed to come in late June? Yeah, Okay. It was, which I don't believe that... It's being pushed back because all of a sudden, we're in August, she stops asking me for money. So I think that she has already received her money and is not ever going to pay me back. Or because she uses people. I have found out lately that she's borrowed a lot of money from a lot of other people that I did not know about who she has never paid back in years past. And so she either found another person to borrow money off of or she's already gotten her money and just does not want to pay me back. Okay. Let me ask you this question. You mentioned uh, you were in a car accident. Do you know that the car accident actually happened? Yes. Okay, so the car accident happened. You got a settlement. And what were you spending $10,000 a month on? You were loaning her $10,000 a month plus, I understand, Ubers and things like that. You agreed to the dollar amount, $86,000? Yes, but okay. a lot of the things that she has are like on paper and aren't actual documents. So I have screenshots. That's fine. I have I, don't, let me be the judge. Let me be the judge. I don't need you to be the judge, okay? Tell me what you do. I'm a dancer. You're a dancer? Mm -hmm. All right. Who do you dance for? Um, a club called Imperial Showgirls. So is it like a nightclub? What kind of dancer are you? It's a strip you? club. Okay, it's a strip. Okay, so you're a stripper. Mm -hmm. Is that what it is? Yes. All right. Well, I'm not a stripper. I'm a judge. And I have a degree. Uh, I have many degrees, as a matter of fact. So let me be the judge of her paperwork, okay? Mm -hmm. You dance, and I'll judge. Are we in agreement? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So what I want to understand is... Why did you need $10,000 a month? What are your bills? What are your expenses? What do you need to cover for that amount of money? 
Well, a lot of it was just my personal lifestyle, but also my family had gotten sick. I have family members in other places where they have to have the money up front for any type of surgeries and things like that, or else they won't help them in Jordan. In Jordan, that's another in another part of the world? Yes. Okay, and so what kind of surgeries are they having? So my mother was dying. I'm so sorry. So she needed heart surgery. Um, like I said, in the hospitals, it doesn't work like here. They don't help you up front. So you have to pay the money up front or else they'll let you, like, they'll let the person actually die. So that was a lot of what came up. But some of it, I will admit, was my lifestyle choices as well. And when you, before you had the accident, how much money were you making a month? It depends on the month. It could be anywhere from like 5000 to more than 10000 5000 to $10,000 per month? Is yes. that what you were making? Were you ever making more than that? I have, yes. It all depends on What's the month. What's the most you've made in a month? I would say thirteen, probably. About $13,000. And when was the last time you made that amount of money? Between ten and 13000 Probably when I first started dancing. And when was that? Um, before I borrowed money from her, like over a year ago. Okay, and how much are you making now? You're working again? Yes. How much are you making now? Now I make about average seven or eight a month. Seven or eight thousand dollars a month. Correct. Do you know that she's working again? Yes. Is it possible that she's using the money that she's making now working to cover some of the expenses that it looks like she's um, maybe indulging in? Is that possible? Maybe. That it, how much money have you paid back to Ms. Camino? Not a large sum. How much? Probably a couple thousand. How much has she paid you back? Maybe seven or eight thousand. I've kept track of it. Okay, so you have kept track of it. Yes. So how much did she borrow in the beginning? 86,000 total from December to July. 86,000 and she has paid back 7 or 8,000? Yes. You do you know which one it is? Do you have I an accurate 7, record and a date? Okay, so 7,000. Do you agree with that number? Yes. Okay, so she owes you have received $7,000 already, so you are still owed $79,000. Yes. What are your plans to pay back the $79,000? Once I get my settlement, I'm willing to pay her back in full. When you get when you get the settlement, Correct. have you borrowed money from any other friends in the past and not paid them back? I've paid them back, maybe not in the most timely manner. And why didn't you pay back in a timely manner? Sometimes with the job that I have, it can be a little bit difficult. Some, not, some months are better than others. So if something comes up and I'm not making enough money, it's not expected. And what were you borrowing money for in the past? Because this time it was because of an accident, mm -hmm. you couldn't work and you're helping family members yeah. in other parts of the world. What was happening before? So before that, um, I had co-signed a friend's loan and she hadn't paid for it. So when a payment had come up, they call you the day of and I didn't have that money that day. So I had to pay it or else it would have hurt my credit. And how much was that? That was $1,000. And is that the only thing you've ever borrowed from other friends in the past that you didn't pay back in a timely manner? About, that's, that's the only thing I can think of, yeah. Have you heard anything different than what she's saying now? How many other friends has she borrowed from that you know of, that you actually have factual information regarding? Yes, uh, we actually used to dance at the same gentleman's club. Mm -hmm. And um, and you dance there too? Yes, okay. we once used to work at the same club. That's how we met, that's how we became friends. I'm still at that gentleman's club. She went to another one. Um, I just know here and then, like, oh, like, spot me some cigarettes. Oh, can you spot me? Like, we're going to go drinking later. Little things here and there, but I that girls at the club know that she's not reliable. She's not a reliable person to pay back. I know about the bail, about the other girl that went to okay. jail. She was helping. I understand that, and that was a large sum, but I'm just saying that over time, I realized that she was not a reliable person from accounts from other girls at the club. Okay. But is it, is it fair to say that there's a possibility, there's a possibility that some of these smaller things like cigarettes or candy or whatever, I mean, sometimes people say they're going to do things. Are there any other large outstanding amounts like $80,000 or $50,000? No. If you said that, that would concern me. But right. little rinky-dink things here and there, I, I'm, I'm just not going to say that that's a huge character flaw. Of course, if you borrow money for cigarettes or food and you say you're going to pay it back, you should. But if you don't, it really doesn't make you a thief, especially if, you're, it's, if it's your friend. That's kind of what friends do. Would you agree with that? Yes. Okay, all right. But I want to get to, your, to the meat of your issue here. You shared that there were some other issues that you were concerned about in terms of your identity, identity or something to that effect? Yes. 
Um, I had let her borrow some of my credit cards because there were problems with her bank account, her credit cards, and I've been trying to help her fix that. Mm -hmm. So, for example, when she needed to go to work and she needed an Uber, I always let her use my credit cards and I would just write down and screenshot every time she used it. But now she's saying like, oh, well, that wasn't my Uber ride. It must have been yours. Like, she's not taking accountability for all the transactions. And I told her, well, you can dispute it with me. We can talk about it. But she's like, well... You know, like, I don't know if any of these are all mine. And um, I actually have been calling a lot of these, like, iTunes and stuff like that. Um, and they're telling me, like, well, it looks like someone is still using your credit cards. We don't know who it is. And I don't know if it's for if it's her for sure. It could be fraud that is, like, another party. I'm not sure. Um, but I've just been having a lot of problems with my credit cards. And I talked to them over the phone. They said, do you know anyone who has had your information in the past that you have let borrow with your consent? The only person would be Miss Adams. So right now that I'm having so many problems, I'm beginning to think, like, she still has my credit card information logged onto some of her accounts. Um, you know, and I've asked her multiple times, like, take it, take it off. Like, why are you buying lotions on this credit card? Like, why are you buying this on, on this other credit card? Her Hulu account on one of my credit cards. And we're in August now, and it still keeps getting charged to my card. Is that a fair statement? Is she stating the truth? That the there only are... things I ever charged to her cards were things that she consented for me to charge. Okay, so here's what is happening here. There are items that she has put on subscription. Yes. And I know this from personal experience especially with iTunes. You could change that credit card 50 times. I, my children, I got all kind of people getting iTunes, they're getting songs, Cardi B, Beyonce. I'm like, I didn't buy this. And I told the people to stop, but it's still happening. Yes. You actually have to shut it down completely. You may need to cancel the credit card altogether because somehow, some way, if you don't actually remove those cards out of, the, uh, out of the subscription, it may continue to charge. But what I want you to do is to go through everything that you have, Uber and Hulu, and Netflix and every subscription that you have, clothes that you may be ordering, and take her credit card information out. This is actually something that you have to pay attention to. Yeah. I understand that you've had an accident. I understand that you're in the middle of litigation at a settlement and you're trying to take care of family. And sometimes that could be stressful and you don't pay attention to the little things. And you might even be thinking, hey, I'm getting 1.3 million. This 9.99 here and there isn't a big deal, but it is a big deal. It is a big deal. Is what I'm saying, does that make sense to you? Yes. Does it make sense? Yes. Okay, because I'm not thinking that she's running around trying to steal your identity. However, I'm going to tell you, if you do that, you will be the one who will need bail. Do you understand? Yes. You will go to jail for that. So there are a couple of things that I'm going to issue for you. One, I want you to do a cease and desist on all support. All support. Let me ask you this first. Why did you stop talking to her? The, the situation got a little bit hostile. Like, we couldn't have positive conversations anymore. I have a little bit of a temper, and she can be a little bit, you know, upset when it comes to money. So together, it doesn't mix well. And how much money were you making a month that you actually had an extra $10,000 a month to loan to her for yeah, that amount of time? Yeah, I have the exact number. From December to July, I made $114,000. Mm -hmm. Of that one fourteen, I gave her eighty six. The remainder I used for, I'm a very frugal person, I used for barely the things that I needed. My car note, my rent, my small bills. I haven't gone shopping in months. I don't spend money on things that I don't need, but I know that she does. Okay. And she just kept telling me, well, what does it matter that you're letting me borrow them? Like, don't worry, I'm going to give you the money back. Don't worry about how I'm spending it. And I was like, you're right. As long as you give me the total amount of money back, I don't care what you spend it on. Okay. All right. So that makes sense to me. And I see, I see your bills and I do see that you live very frugally. However, in the future, I do not advise that you loan a friend $86,000. I think that if you're living frugally and somebody goes through a life change that causes them to have to reduce their spending... Then they, they now need to live like you live. <laughs> Otherwise, you got to live a whole different way. But you shouldn't support someone's budget that's bigger than yours who is not your husband or some significantly related family member. Does that make sense? But she is like my sister. Okay, She's so like are you sisters friend. or not? Are you happy or are you sad? Because I'm looking <laughs> at two people who look like they should be friends. And I'm going to tell you the truth. I don't think she's gotten a settlement. Let me tell you, I've seen these kinds of cases before. I've been in situations where I signed the papers in... July, and I don't get the money. They say it's going to come in 30 days, 
But lawyers are busy. They're in court. Somebody didn't get the paperwork. You got the signature. It wasn't right. Now we need to get it notarized. Like there's all these kinds of things. I don't believe she's gotten a settlement yet. I actually don't believe it. I think that she's working now and I think she's making enough money to handle some of her expenses and she might be a little careless and she wasn't being frugal when you were loaning her the money and you were spending less. So she's not going to be frugal now. That's what I really think happens. But I am going to say to you, if you've got that money and you have not paid her, shame on you because what goes around comes around. And the next time you are in a situation where either you need something, then it's going to be difficult for you. And worse, if you are actually stealing, which is what happens when you borrow money from someone, you don't pay it back and you use it for something else, you're actually now stealing. So even if the court doesn't get you, even if the police doesn't get you, guess what? Your, your energy, your own karma is going to get you and it's not going to be good for you. So I highly recommend what I'm going to order today. Obviously, I'm going to make a repayment order. You have to pay her back. I want you to sign an agreement that you're going to pay her back when you get the settlement. Are we okay with that? All right. Yes. And then I want you to sit down at some point and really think about your friendship. I want you to think about what's happened because when things don't go as you plan, it's easy to start thinking other things. You know, she didn't pay this person back for the cigarettes or for the purse or for the dinner or what have you. But really, that's a different scale. But the truth is, it all adds up to create what's called your character. And you look like a beautiful young lady. Both of you, you look like you're smart. I hope you're planning to do something with all this money that you're making because you could have a business for yourselves. And then you could start doing some things to help other people. So my ruling is to repay this debt, $86,000 minus $7,000, which is $79,000 to date. And I'm going to ask you to sign a promissory note. We agree? Yes. Okay. That's my ruling. Thank you. Debtor's Court with Lynn Richardson. Thank you.